Hey everybody, welcome to Hope for the Soul. Welcome. So good to have you watch or listen this week. Again, Pastor, Elder Pastor Bishop Overseer. The high potentate. He is not with us. He is he is sailing on a cruise this week. So we gotta give him a hard time next week. It's with a bunch of other high potentate elder bishops. <laughs> <laughs> we somebody has to stay back and work. So yeah. we will we will do the job. But first things first, my joke. Let's talk about it. So three best friends go on a hunting trip. We have a doctor, we have a lawyer, and we have a pastor. And they're out talking, and all of a sudden they see this big buck, and all three three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that ever again. <laughs> the joke's already good. <laughs> Simultaneously, they all shot this buck. So they go up to it, but there's only one bullet. So they're debating who shot this buck. So the game officer comes up and he's like, what's the problem, fellas? And they're like, we all three shot this buck. But there's only one bullet. You like know, one bullet or like one bullet hole? One bullet hole. Okay. And so he was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm the professional. I will be able to tell who shot this buck. So he looks at it and within seconds he said, easy. I know who shot the buck. And they're like, how do you know so fast? He said the pastor is the one who shot this buck because it went went in one ear and out the <laughs> other. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, my word. I can identify. <laughs> it's a good joke. I'm sure every pastor out there can. All of us. Yeah. Hey, but I need you to draw that weapon again. Show us how you did that. <laughs> No, because I think it was almost like a slingshot. You, you didn't know if you had a bow, <laughs> if you had David's slingshot, or if you had yeah. a. Hey, but M16. I, I, felt, I felt like my sound effect was pretty good. I, I lost. I actually didn't even hear the sound effect. I was too busy trying to figure hey, out what weapon. Not everybody you had. is going to watch. Most people listen. So right? you're giving the visual <laughs> yes. and the audio. Yes. Audio? Audio? Yes, audio. There you go. Well, we're excited that. Everybody's tuning in today, and we were talking last night about today, mm -hmm. and you said, what do you want to talk about? And I just said, I can't believe we get to do what we get to do. Mm -hmm. And you said, what does that mean? <laughs> Say it in your country voice that you've been doing. Come no, on. You have to do I'm it. I've called it. you out. You have to do it. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> in my Texas vernacular. Yes. And so... I've just kind of been overcome with God's blessings. And, you know. We talked about that last, uh, last Sunday that there was a part of the service that, you know, you said you couldn't stop the tears because oh. you were just overwhelmed by God's goodness. And I told you, oh my goodness, like I felt, I think we felt it together because I kind of felt mm -hmm. your aura change. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not often either that we get to worship together. Most of the time you're leading worship. Yes, that was a and very... And I think that was an added element that we uh -huh. were standing next to each other in that uh -huh. moment. It was just a powerful moment. And uh, it's just, it, it's a privilege and an honor. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that. That it's, it's It should be a privilege and honor for all of us who call Conroe Church home. Yeah. To be able to recognize the season that we're in and the feeling in the room oh my goodness so when i say i just i can't believe i get to do this this isn't a i can't believe i'm a preacher like mm -hmm. that's that's really awesome mm -hmm. and that's a high honor i can't believe that god's chosen me and his calls on my life but this isn't just to talk about the ministry today this is a talk about just living for the lord and our legacy and our heritage so last night we started talking about our heritage yeah. and uh you talk a little bit about it, babe. I am, um, I am third generation apostolic, and um, Pentecostal. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Pentecostal, um, but I am third generation, and uh, to make two stories really, really short. So, uh, my dad's parents, they were. Um, they were witness to, honestly, 
kind of like a small group. My memo was someone invited her to like a quilting group. And, um, then a pastor knocked on their door witnessing and one thing led to another. That's the really, really, really Really short, short, short short version. There is so many other dynamics to their testimony. It's absolutely incredible. But, and then my mom's parents, so, um, her, uh, her parents going through a really hard time just in their marriage and, um, a, she needed her, I believe it was her dishwasher. It was one of her appliances, maybe not a dishwasher, maybe it was like an oven, but one of her appliances needed work. So she called the serviceman to come and service her appliance that was broken. And, um, not by coincidence, but the serviceman was a local United Pentecostal pastor and, um, witness to her and the rest is history. So it's powerful. Mm-hmm. So I don't know the extent of my heritage. Yeah, I asked myself. you that. I asked you that last night. I, and I've you never. Were like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I know for sure I'm third generation. Do you know preacher. who your dad is? Who <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is this, Mari? <laughs> who is the father? <laughs> okay, only the Cardinal is going to get that one. And uh, so on each side, I know I'm third generation preacher, as far as pastoring. Yeah. Both of my grandfathers. Um, obviously my parents and now me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm fourth or fifth generation as far as saved being a Christian. And I know my grandparent, my Papa Smith, his family, some of the founding members, I don't know all the details, so I'll probably get it wrong. Some of the founding members of Brother uh, Gid Rose's church in Baytown, which if you know anything about the Pentecostal movement movement here in Houston, you know that that was kind of, yeah, that was not the genesis, but one of the cornerstones of uh, the apostolic movement here in Houston. And so they were kind of founding members of that. And then my grandma on the Smith side, her family was very instrumental in starting churches and funding the start of churches given land, building buildings, just being faithful saints of God yeah. all throughout East Texas. And so our heritage is very, very, very rich. And kind of I get overwhelmed with that. I don't think about that a lot, but probably not as much as I should, obviously because I don't know it as well as you know your side of your family. Um, but I get very overwhelmed with the fact that I'm – this is not me just blazing a new trail for our family, but yeah. I'm I'm walked down a path and a trail for generations. And while I'm blazing, while I'm continuing on the journey and the trail, if you will, to use that metaphor, it's not a new trail. It's an old trail that's been walked. And now I've just, I'm not standing beside previous generations. You and I are blessed to stand on the shoulders of previous generations. Right, right. And that's the power that's the power of heritage, you know. Proverbs, I mentioned this this past Sunday, Proverbs thirteen, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Mm-hmm. King James Version says a wise man. So just to put those two together, a person with godly character leaves something for his children. Mm-hmm. Now I in, in our finances, I believe that's true, mm-hmm. but also with the heritage and legacy that we're passing to our three kids, yeah, um, a good Christian, a good marriage will leave a legacy for the children and the grandchildren in its wake. And I, I think so many times we overlook these principles of how important it is just to be consistent in our walk mm-hmm. with God mm-hmm. week in and week out maybe even before that, day in and day out. Just be consistent. And consistency, I'm going to talk a little bit, today's Wednesday, we're recording this on Wednesday, so in Discipleship Wednesday, as I'm calling it, in my Bible lesson tonight at Connor Church, I'm going to talk a little bit about how faithfulness brings spiritual growth. So the reward of faithfulness is discipleship. Mm -hmm. Like we're not discipled and then become faithful. No, it's our faithfulness. 
uh, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, I think it's 8 and 9, by grace were you saved through faith. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation says it's the grace of God that allowed new believers to get saved, not based off of works of ourselves, because then we can boast, we can become arrogant. No, we didn't save Mm ourselves. It was God's grace. Mm -hmm. But before we received God's grace, we had to believe or put faith in God that he possessed grace that was saving and so just to scale all that, just to reverse, I guess, reverse engineer what grace is and what faith is, grace is the unmerited favor of God. How do we receive that? By believing that it exists. Mm-hmm. Okay, We don't receive that. We can't do anything. We just have to believe that it exists and that God is good enough to let us receive that. Yeah. Now, to break down belief and faith, to reverse engineer that, uh, it's just on a day-to-day basis saying, Lord, I don't have all the answers, yeah. but I'm going to believe that your grace is real for me, not just yesterday, but today. Mm-hmm. Not just when you saved me, but that same grace is saving and keeping me today. It follows me. It, yeah, it, it's, mm-hmm. w- w- what's the scripture? His love is chasing us down. Yeah. Um, and so belief and faithfulness in our belief, in our faith, the reward of faithfulness is spiritual development and spiritual formation. Mm-hmm. It's taken us generations for you and I to be here. Mm-hmm. We didn't get here by ourselves. No. You know, uh, what's the verse that we, uh, we, we were in our mother's womb when our mother was in her womb. Mm-hmm. Like we existed before we ever existed. God's thought for us. So beyond our comprehension. <laughs> it's beyond our comprehension. Yeah. Like, so you want to talk about when life begins? <laughs> We were in the mind of God mm-hmm. when our mother was in her mother's womb. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that really takes on a different narrative when it comes to political debates today with the sanctity of life and all of this. When does life begin? You can't, life began when God said, let there be. Right, right. Now, it was in seed form. It was in seed form. It was in cell form. Mm-hmm. But there's also scripture that says that until Christ returns, it's seed time and harvest. Yeah. Like it's always time for us to grow. Yeah. And so now that we've reversed engineered that to wherever you're at in your relationship with God today in your journey, if you're a first generation believer, if you're a new believer, you don't even know what all this means yet, but you repented of your sins and baptized in Jesus name and filled with the beautiful gift of the Holy spirit. If that's where you're at in your journey, don't rush the process. Yeah. There's this desire in all of us to rush the process, especially in today's culture. Microwave, easy bake oven, yeah. HOV lanes. Um, uh, we were talking, we're traveling a lot this year. TSA pre-check, you know, let's get the pre-check so we don't have to wait in the line. Mm-hmm. Let's hurry and get through the line so we can go wait in another line that we can't get around. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to rush everything. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ, too many people rush the beginning stages of their relationship. And it really messes them up because they don't build a strong foundation. And uh, talk a little bit about that tonight as well. Um, so some people rush their own development because they're eager and they're so amazed. And it's good intention. I'm not criticizing anyone. Mm-hmm. But likewise, I've also seen church people rush the spiritual development of some people, of new believers. Yeah. And that is extremely yeah. harmful. Like yeah. It's taken you and I generations to get where we are. You know, we've been saved as individuals. I was saved when I was five. I'm 36, 31 years. Oh, my goodness. I was seven. Wow. 30 years. 31 years. 29 years. There you go. I'll get it right here in a minute. Um, And so that's decades of us walking with God. Yeah. But it's taken us those decades to to get us to where we are now. And a lot of times church people want to speed up the process. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mention this tonight as well. So if you're listening to this you've, and you were at Church Wednesday or watched, you've heard, you've heard this. But it's, you know, a lot of times some people are going to be, hey, I'm concerned about this. We've got all these new people, but we're not seeing growth. You're not supposed to see growth immediately mm-hmm. because most of the growth is happening inside. inside. Yeah, Like we can't expect to see outward growth if in the discipleship the journey. Right. Like I'm just glad. Like some people come and it doesn't happen often, thankfully. But to say it doesn't happen would be a lie because it does happen. And I think it's good intention because 
uh, we're seeing a lot of growth and we want everybody to grow and let's, let's all go the same direction. So this isn't just a hard criticism of people that have said this and feel this way because I have at times as well, but we want quick results and new believers. When as a pastor, I'm just thankful that people quit having pre they've quit pre having <laughs> premarital sex, Yeah, you know? Like, that's the win I'm celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know there's a lot more growth, but we've got this couple's living together, mm -hmm. and they've agreed that they're going to stop doing some activities because yep. the Holy Spirit's convicted them. Yep. And, yeah. you but know, that's not saying that there's not more growth to be had. People don't see that part. But we don't, sometimes we don't see that part, and we don't take the time to get to know someone. Mm -hmm. We don't want to know their story, mm -hmm. but yet we want to hurry and get to where I'm at in my story. Well, you don't know their story of what they've come from. Like it's just, yeah. Some of our new converts, it's a miracle that they showed up on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. It's just a miracle that it's a miracle that they're not hung over or they're mm -hmm. not strung out on something. Yeah, you know, and and I'm not saying that. Pe uh, I'm not, I'm not at all saying that people don't need to grow past that mm -hmm. because they do. Yeah. But it takes time to unless the seed falls in the ground and dies. Yeah. Yeah. Like it takes, we have to die to the old man. We have to yeah. just, just the spiritual formation is such a, it's, it's a concept that's not new by any means, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it will never get old yeah. to hear and watch people be transformed. So our heritage is so great. Um, really heritage and legacy is kind of what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think in terms of legacy, I've preached a lot about it. I've taught a lot of, about legacy, we have inherited a legacy that is rich in our family. Yep. We are passing down a legacy that is extremely rich. But we're not standing beside our parents and our grandparents. I said, I've already said this, we're standing on our parents and grandparents' shoulders. Older. Right. In other words, it's going to take the same level of sacrifice and dedication from Trent and Kayla. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it took from Steve and Denise mm -hmm. and Trent and Kent, Kent and Tracy. Mm -hmm. Like our sacrifice will look much different, mm -hmm. but it will be required to be equal. Mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing the things right now in Conroe Church. Yeah. You know, the things that you and I do will look much different than the things that mom and dad accomplished. Right. And it will, right. truthfully, it will look greater mm -hmm. and more appealing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's going to require the same level of sacrifice. Yeah. This is going to happen only because the faithfulness that your parents had of mom and dad, but yeah. also an entire generation of believers that stood and said, stood with we're going to build something yeah. out of nothing. Right. On the bad days, right. you're still going to show up. Yeah. That's really what faithfulness is. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness is when, when I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to. Yep. And churches aren't built in a day. Cities aren't built in a day. Families aren't built in a day. Neither is legacy. Yeah. Legacies are built after generation, after generation, after generation. You know, and some of, we've talked a lot about this together. And it's at sometimes, at some points, it's been not a point of contention, but it's been a frustrating point for you and I because we look around and we see all that's happened in this Houston region mm -hmm. and it's absolutely unbelievable. We've seen what's happened in the Southeast corner of Texas. We've got family, Northeast Texas, just, just this whole area of Texas is unbelievable. And it's built on names that we've already mentioned, like VA Gidros, mm -hmm. James Kilgore, mm -hmm. Wayne McLean, mm -hmm. Arliss Glass. And there's, countless others that I'm not going to mention and I right. probably have never even heard their names of but did just as just as many incredible things yeah but our generation if we're not careful we will try and maintain what we've been given mm -hmm. and you don't maintain a legacy no no it'd be like the same thing as becoming stagnant it's like an airplane an airplane doesn't have reverse mm -hmm. Whenever we travel, we board the plane. There's a vehicle that pushes the plane backwards mm -hmm. because a plane has no reverse. 
once airborne, if that plane loses thrust, it's going to fall. Now, it may glide. It might nosedive. A lot of it depends on physics. A lot of it depends on the weight distribution. But if it loses thrust, what goes up right. must come down. Yeah. The same is true of legacy. Mm -hmm. You do not maintain mm -hmm. a legacy. If you maintain a legacy, you kill it. Yeah. So if we're just content with maintaining what has been given to us and our family, mm -hmm. not reaching for more, not striving for more, not pushing our kids to be better yeah. than we are and our parents and Redon and Hector and Kyle and Katie and Cameron and the rest of our families, mm -hmm. grandparents, if we don't push our children to be better, mm -hmm. we're yeah. failing them. The same is true in the spiritual aspect. If we lead Conroe Church to this point and then just say we're happy with where we're at, that's that's not God's plan. God's plan is perpetual growth, seed time and harvest until he returns. And so legacies are not maintained. They grow through sacrifice. It takes the same level of sacrifice. Um, let me read this verse of scripture that's really it's it's come alive to me the last few days psalms 92 verse 12 uh i'll read 12 through 14 no uh 12 through 15 let's read all of it but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow and grow strong like cedars of lebanon for they are transplanted to the lord's own house they flourish in the courts of our god even in old age they still produce fruit. Mm -hmm. They will remain vital and green. Mm -hmm. They will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. So this legacy. I like that. They will. You said they will remain vital. And green. And green when they're growing. When they're growing. Mm -hmm. Healthy things grow. Yep. Healthy families produce what? Children. Yep. Healthy churches produce growth yeah you know uh but uh but that verse 14 it says that where it says they remain vital and they remain green mm -hmm. that's talking of old yeah yeah that's talking of not millennials mm -hmm. that's gen x and the boomers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for god to accomplish for god's will to be accomplished in conroe church as he desires it to be. We don't know what that is. We don't know what that looks like. But what we do know according to his word is that it's all generations. Yeah. We all have to be healthy. The godly will flourish. If you've lived for God for one month or 70 years, mm -hmm. the godly flourish and they grow strong. Mm -hmm. And then verse 14, even in old age, they will still produce fruit yeah just because you've served god for a generation you're 50 60 70 80 your body slows down mm -hmm. but your commitment does not mm -hmm. i say this humbly because i'm, I'm speaking to elders now mm -hmm. but for huh, for what to accomplish for what to be for the will of the lord to be accomplished at conroe church mm -hmm. as god sees fit it can't just be the millennials driving this thing. It can't be you and I pouring into Gen Z. Yeah. It has to be Gen X. It has to be the boomers. It has yeah. to be those 80-year-olds. It has yeah. to be all of us. Yeah. Because if we're not linked up, mm -hmm. there's going to be a void. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's very important for us to realize that we are now living in a godless culture. Yeah. We don't feel that as much here mm -hmm. in Montgomery County, Conroe, yeah. Texas. Yeah. But by and large, give it 10 or 15 years and we will. Yeah. Look at what's happening in the school boards in this region. Mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years, the fight in the school boards will, will be won and lost. Mm -hmm. And that fight will transition to city hall mm -hmm. and courthouses. You know, well, well, everybody's moving to Conroe and the, the suburbs to lose all that stuff that's happening in the Harris County Courthouse and the city council meetings in Houston. Yeah. Well, guess what? The same war that's happening in City Hall and Harris County 
is happening in the school boards of the yeah. suburbs. Yeah. So the battle is coming. Mm -hmm. We're a generation behind mm -hmm. in the suburbs mm -hmm. yeah. because people, we like to herd together and be like-minded. Yeah, yeah. But the battle is coming. Yeah. So we have to stay strong and we have to recognize that we don't win a civil battle, a political battle with politics. Mm -hmm. We win. The yeah. kingdom of God advances yeah. through prayer, yes. sacrifice, yeah. dedication. And that's how heritage mm -hmm. is passed down. Mm -hmm. That's how you create a legacy. Well, Pastor Trent, I've only been saved a month. I, I, I've only been coming to Conroe Church for a few days. My family, when you look up dysfunction in the dictionary, it's got a picture of my family. Well, that means it's going to have a picture of our family too. Yeah. <laughs> Because legacy doesn't do away with dysfunction. No, nope. we're all touched by that. Uh, but let me it just doesn't, say, it doesn't just choose one family. <laughs> no, that's crazy in all families. <laughs> you know, that's that, that's that's becoming more evident mm -hmm. in the church today because we used to hide our scandal, and now because we hid our scandals and we weren't real and authentic. What's done in secret will be brought to light, Scripture says. Literally shouted out from the rooftop. And, and we've tried to act like we're perfect uh -huh. when we weren't. Yep. And yep. that's shaking Christianity yep. right now. Yep. So I think there's a call to authentic faith right yep. now. That's yep. a buzzword, and I don't, I'm not trying to be a buzzword, but we've got to be real and authentic. That's what people want. I've, I've, I've told that to our ladies, our ministry group, so many times that – when a new person walks in the door in the moment that they feel that we're not genuine, that we're being fake, they're done. I don't blame them. I mean, I'm, I'm that way. You know, the moment that I feel like you're not being true to yourself, you're being someone else. I'm like, yeah, I've kind of tuned you out. Yeah. And people don't want to follow someone that's not like them. Yeah. Now yeah. that doesn't mean they want to follow someone that's short, that has shortcomings and, yeah. lacks integrity and character. That's not what that means. But as a man, I want to follow someone else yeah. that's had the same struggle I have. Or maybe not the same struggle, but they walk with a limp. Yep. And when we hide our limp, mm -hmm. when we hide our struggle, yeah. we're really saying that our testimony is not valid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When God sent the struggle, mm -hmm. you know, maybe... Your struggle came in the form of divorce. God didn't send the divorce, but he allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. And now you walk with a limp. Your family's affected by something that is shameful and embarrassing. But when we hide that, we're saying that God's grace is, wasn't good enough. It got us through, yeah. but now it's not good enough to share our testimony. Yeah. And so we've just got to be real and authentic. Mm -hmm. And that's how a, a, a legacy can't be true if we deny the facts of our life. It takes the good and the bad to build a legacy. Yeah. Like there's things in your families, there are things in my families that we are not proud of. Mm -hmm. There's things that I'm trying to change mm -hmm. about my nature mm -hmm. that I didn't choose, but it's just a part of my blood. Yeah. It's part of my DNA. Yeah. Same with you. There are traits that we love our families. Yeah. We are blessed with incredible families. Yeah. But there are things that we recognize. If I change this. Mm -hmm. That if, I want to do differently yeah, with our kids. Exactly. Yeah. It's not that we were raised bad. It's not that no. we were done wrong. It's not that. No. But there's this one little tweak I can make. Yeah. And if I make this tweak, look what can happen. Or even if someone listening or someone watching, even if you were done wrong in your family, because there are situations yes. like that it's not worth being bitter for the rest of your life because that bitterness is not going to affect anyone else that caused that pain. That's right. It's only going to affect you. That's right. So, that's sorry, right. that's a little tidbit. There. No, no, that's good. So we've talked about this is the personal aspect. Yeah. Now let's talk to the corporate vision, Conroe Church. I was talking about this a while ago, and I hit a good rabbit trail. But so there's men who were bold and brave, that created something very powerful in this region. And I think it's time for men to be bold and brave again. 
you know, I it's I remember when I remember when some of the big buildings were being built here in Houston. I remember the boldness. I was a child at this time, but it took these men 40 and 50 years to get to that point in their ministry, and then they built it, and they handed their ministry over to a younger man who now today is not young. They're, they're now handing their ministries over and their churches over. And, but it was bold leadership. Yeah. And the future doesn't belong to the timid. It belongs to the bold. Oh, especially it's a different day, oh. um, facing different giants. Yeah. So no, there is, you have to be bold. Have to be bold. Or else there's a legacy that will be forgotten. Yeah. yeah. And when we talk in terms of legacy and heritage, yes, it's family. Yes, it's church. It's people. But let's be real. This isn't pride. Yeah. No, it's we're building be, a legacy for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. My family legacy is to glorify God. Look what the Lord has done yeah. in these five yeah. generations. And even if you know your first generation, if your legacy is just now starting, be proud of it. You have nothing to be ashamed of. No, not at all. The blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful yeah. that the things that you could be ashamed of, they have been forgiven. And since they have been forgiven, they are now, here we go again, back to testimony. Mm -hmm. You share these things not to gloat. You share these things to create a strong legacy for your family or collectively to create a strong legacy in this region Mm -hmm. that look what God did through Conroe Church. Yeah. Look what God did through people who were unified together. Oh, they had their differences. Mm -hmm. There was problems that came. There's going to be more problems that come in the future. But through the problems, they stayed committed. Yeah. They stayed bold. They may have lost their faith for a moment. They may, had, they may have fallen and lost their breath, mm-hmm. but they caught their breath. They found their faith again, and they said, this life is not for me. Right. My family is not for me. Yeah. This is for the glory of God. So build a legacy. If you've been given a legacy or if the legacy you've been given is not godly, you have the opportunity to create new culture. Oh, my goodness. We talk about this with our ministry friends a lot, creating culture. You know, if you're starting a church, it's easy to create culture. Mm -hmm. You just do what you feel like needs to be done. Mm -hmm. If you're in our position, you don't get to create new culture. Mm -hmm. You have to honor the culture that was before while blazing a trail. And so there's a, there's different, there's, there's, there's benefits and there's pros and cons to each of these scenarios. Yeah. But regardless, if you're a new believer, yeah, the con might be, well, I'm the first one doing this. I don't know how to do it. But the pro is, look who God chose to yep. change your family yes. tree. Yes. Yeah. L- look, look who God trusted. Mm-hmm. It starts with me. It starts with me. Yeah. The power of just saying, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. I'm going to say yes. One more verse of scripture. Psalms chapter one. Psalms. Psalms. <laughs> it's th- this is very much in line of Psalms 92 that I just read, talking about trees being green, stand vibrant. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law. Of the Lord. Sometimes, let me just pause and say this. Sometimes you got to change who you're hanging out with. Mm -hmm. If you want your legacy to be different, Mm -hmm. if you want your family dynamic to change, if you're if you are the one that's changing your family tree, you can't hang out with the wicked. You can't stand around with the sinners. Doesn't mean you can't have relationship and love them because we have to influence them. You know, and it may not even be the wicked. You know, because we think of wicked people. I think mm-hmm. of witches. Yeah, we got them here around Cardinal Church. <laughs> but it just be negative people. Negativity, toxic. Yeah. You think, okay, well, I'm not that type of person, and my goodness will uh, outweigh their negative. Not necessarily. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. Now, if God has given you influence, yeah, influence is different. Influence says you're coming up to me. Yeah. I'm calling you up. I'm calling you out. I'm going to be I'm going to hang out with you. I'm going to go to lunch with you. But I'm not talking about the things you talk about with your other friends. Yeah. 
we're going to talk about a new life. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. godly principles. We're going to have fun and laugh while we do it. Yeah. But we're not we're not going back to an old lifestyle. Verse two, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditate, meditating on it day and night. They are like, here we go, like Psalms 92. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, mm -hmm. bearing fruit in every season. Mm -hmm. Not bearing fruit in springtime, getting ready for harvest time. No, mm -hmm. that's, that's this world that we live in. Yeah. But in the kingdom of God, we are to bear fruit in every yeah. season. That water is growing that tree. Uh, the word the, is growing us. The King James says we're to be like trees planted along the river of living water. Mm -hmm. That's what the King James says. Um, their leaves never wither. Psalms 92, they remain vital and green. And they will prosper in everything they do. Mm -hmm. There is a realm, well, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. There is a realm of living it's not always easy. Bad days come. Yep. But you prosper in everything. Yep. You might get knocked down, but rejoice not against me. Yep. Oh, my, my enemy. Enemies. When I fall, I shall yep. arise. Yep. My family might get knocked back. Might make a mistake in finances. Might be divorced in the family. Might be we have to rally and help somebody else mm -hmm. out in the family or in a friend group. Yeah, there's going to be a bad day. But Scripture says we'll prosper in all that we do. Yeah. That means what the devil meant for bad, yeah. God is going to turn, turn around. around. So in the bad days, we're tempted to beat ourselves up. Mm -hmm. If I would have done this differently, yeah. that's natural. We all think that. But it's unnatural to go back. We can't go back and change what we did. Right. But through our brokenness, through through our mistakes, there's there's this there's a, a velvet red stream of grace and blood that flows. Yeah. And it makes the good days better yeah. and the bad days good. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that if you're not a tree planted, planted by, by rivers. Water. Yep. Rivers of living water. Yep. Sinking roots. The beautiful part of a tree, let's talk, let's talk about discipleship again. The beautiful part of a tree is what we see. You got this fake, is that a ficus tree or palm tree? We got this fake tree that looks beautiful. If that was a real tree, we would behold its splendor. King yeah. James Version, okay? We would say it's beautiful. But what makes the beautiful part of that tree beautiful is the ugly part of that tree. Yeah. The dirty part of that tree. The roots. The roots. Yeah. You and Sissy... This week, y'all went and bought seeds. Uh -huh. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm real. I want to have a green thumb. <laughs> I want to deep down. It is in there for me to have a green thumb. And Allie, she is so girly. She she's into all of it. And so, um, for a little trip for us, she wanted to go and buy seeds and me and her plant them. And so we did that and, you know, it would have been easy just to go and get the little flower and plant the flower. But, you know, we wanted to see the growth of these seeds. So we went and got some, uh, some fruit. She wanted some blueberries and watermelons and strawberries. So we have to start them out inside and then we take them outside in a, a few weeks. But yeah, I went out this morning to see <laughs> What did we do that two days ago? Yeah, two days ago, and I'm like, maybe I'll just see a little sprout. And one of them, the wind had knocked it over, and I was like, oh gosh. But yeah, we're we're starting our own plant plants garden garden. That's <laughs> what we, <laughs> we don't even know the terminology, but we're trying to grow something. We're trying to seek roots. We we know what looks pretty. Yeah. <laughs> we know what looks pretty. So, but isn't that such a metaphor for living for God? Yeah. You know, a new believer, it's, it's, you're in seed form. Yeah. You haven't broken above the surface of the ground, but one day you're going to break above and one day you're going to be beautiful. The storms are going to come, but if the storms don't come, that doesn't give the soul nutrients. Yeah. 
the ugly times of life. We don't know how to stand if the storm doesn't come. Can you stand? Palm trees grow through hurricane force winds. Palm trees only grow when the wind and water come. You did a message about that one time. Yeah. So a palm tree will lean over in, in a storm, mm-hmm. but it, it'll lean over and as the, in the middle of the storm, it will grow. And then when the storm passes, it'll slowly start to stand back up. Wow. And I think that's, that's, us. that's something that's that, us. that when the storms come, yeah. it's not time to be boastful and prideful and arrogant yeah. because if you stay standing strong, there's some palm trees that are unhealthy mm-hmm. and, and, and they lose their top. They die. Because there's something unhealthy in the soul or there's something un- unhealthy within themselves and they don't succumb to the storm. They they don't succumb to their purpose and their design. And they stay they stay standing and they topple. But in this when when the storms of life come, if we bow low, mm-hmm. that doesn't that doesn't get us out of the storm. No. But when we bow low, it protects us during the storm. Yeah. It's I'm still there. I'm still hurting. I'm still crying. This storm has taken me out. But the sun's going to shine again. Physically. It's taken me out before. Mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, can't make it another day. But when the storm's over and the sun comes back out. Yep. The sun shines again. So powerful. I can stand strong because I kept on. Yeah. All right. Last thing in closing. Uh, starting your family legacy, you have to have a commitment to God. You have to have a commitment to growth. I'm going to grow. Mm-hmm. Today's going to be better than yesterday. Yeah. No one, m- most times people won't see my growth. And we don't just grow on Wednesdays and Sundays. No, every day. Yeah. Every day. And then we have to have a commitment to excellence. Like, I'm not doing the things I'm doing for people. Mm-hmm. I'm doing these things unto the Lord. Yeah. You know, we've, you know, there's a tension between contentment and growth. You know, some people could criticize us and we have been criticized for this and I guess it's valid, but we're always trying to change something. We're always trying to grow. We're always trying to do something different. Um, and we've learned that there's a right way to do that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with leading people. Mm-hmm. We, we've learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah. Um, and so some change can't happen too quickly because yeah. you lose people. Yeah. But the flip side is there's a tension between being content and striving for excellence. Yeah. Contentment, we have to be content. You and I learned a valuable lesson in contentment and that's led us here. If we didn't learn that lesson, we wouldn't be where we're at in life right now. Absolutely. We would have made terrible decisions. Absolutely. And we may, we probably wouldn't even be in ministry right now. Yeah. Thank God we learned that lesson. And we'll always have to continue learning that lesson to a certain extent. But being content doesn't mean I'm not going to grow. Being content means that while it might not happen as fast as I think it should, I'm not going to stop pushing. I'm still trusting. I'm still going to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to cast a vision for my family. Not going to have a bad attitude. Yeah. Because it's easy. It's very easy. It's very easy to have a bad attitude, especially when you feel like, God, you don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You need to speed this process up, God. And, But it's very easy to get a really bad attitude when you feel like you're stuck Mm -hmm. somewhere. There's a lesson to be learned when you're stuck. Yeah. And so there's that tension. So if if you're starting a legacy for your family... We need to start that. The lesson when we're stuck like Chuck. <laughs> what to do when you're stuck like Chuck. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so uh, never settle for ordinary. Yeah. We're Doesn't not, mean we're not perfect. No. We're not perfect. We fail. Mm-hmm. We make mistakes. Yeah. We have to circle back and learn. But we can strive for excellence. But legacies are not maintained. No. They're only propelled. They only go forward. They only go forward. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. 
think this went a lot longer than we thought it was going to go. A lot <laughs> longer than we thought it was yeah. going to go. So, but we hope this is a blessing to you. So if yeah. you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, review us, leave a star, text the link to a friend, share, share it, subscribe, all the things. Oh, all of them. I forget all. We're of them. terrible at promoting. <laughs> We really are. That's why we have Alex. (laughs) Um, But thanks, everybody, for listening. We hope this was an encouragement to you and a blessing. And see you next week on Hope for the Soul.